2005, um, me and my brother, we were uh, at Chelsea Football Club and um, uh, our manager got a phone call from the Philippine Football Federation asking if me and my brother would be interested in playing for the Philippine national team in the 2005 SEA Games here, here in the Philippines. I'm going to England. Um, um, I'm going to miss uh, Chelsea that, that day. So, um, so changing rooms, so Chelsea, um, the Hutton players, Savanilla, um, how good would it be if you played for the Philippines? So, um, that one and that one, um, so, and then, and then make all up. So, Magulat um, Pero we had to make a choice between England or, or Philippines, and Napili um, um, Philippines. That crucial decision paved the way for the young husband's entry to the Philippine team. The manager, Don Palami, believes it was a turning point for the Ascals. Phil and James are, are players who, who, who have, uh, as I said, uh, the, the, the quality that uh, the Philippine team needs in order to, to be successful internationally. Uh, as far as their contributions are concerned, I mean, uh, Phil has been a very terrific uh, striker, and uh, James, uh, one of the best midfielders we've ever had, and uh, and the James especially is really it really works hard on defense as well, and talagang malaki yung naitutulong nila. Success didn't come automatic with the recruitment of the young husband, but. A stunning victory by the country against powerhouse Vietnam in the 2010 Suzuki Cup would become the start of something big. So when we went to play against Vietnam, there was really no pressure. They were the defending champions. They were they were considered as uh, the, the the highest rated uh, team on on that particular uh, group. So we just went out, played well, and then when we beat them, it was, it was, it's like uh, it opened the floodgates. Uh, the, the dam broke and uh, all the support came in. You uh, mga, mga supporters ng football in the Philippines finally uh, went uh, crazy and went out. And uh, really on, 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 on Facebook and all uh, the internet, talagang naglabasan. Wonderful, wonderful victory for the Philippines. The best feeling in our football career, being honest. Um, being honest, we went into the game um, just uh, just play, playing our normal game. Really, we didn't. We just wanted to uh, be, keep the score respectable, and um, in the end, it turned out to be the greatest football night of Philippine history, I believe. And um, yeah, after the game, we're all jumping up in celebrations because they were the host country and they were, they were champions of the Suzuki Cup and they were throwing us out of the stadium. Really, so it was very hard to enjoy the celebrations, but it was a really great night. And that, for sports commentator Bob Guerrero, was when the football fever hit Filipinos. It's interesting because 2010 was a World Cup year. So a lot of people who normally would have no interest in football watched the World Cup and started getting excited and appreciating how fun it is to, to watch football and cheer for a team. And then suddenly in December, uh, we drew with Singapore, and then we beat Vietnam 2-0, and then people started taking note. Hey, we don't have to watch the World Cup and cheer for a, a country that isn't even us. We can cheer for our own national team, and they're not bad. But there is the final whistle. History has been made. A and when you beat Vietnam, everyone congratulated the team. Only one of the top In fact, uh, the day after that, when we, the team drove up to Nam Din to play Myanmar. We were, you know, we were going around the town, and uh, shop owners were going, Vietnam not use their head. Philippines, very good. And, you know, that kind of recognition was very heartwarming, you know. And the team's confidence was just getting better. The more they started winning, uh, the greater uh, the possibility of uh, reeling in the really good players. No? In fact, now, uh, as, uh, after the phenomenal run in the Suzuki Cup, you don't need to call for tryouts. You're coming out of the woodwork. 
calling the PFF, calling the national team, hey, can we play? But, you know, it wasn't a problem. And, uh, in fact, it's quite exciting building a dream team like that. Prior to the group stage of the Challenge Cup in 2011, the Ascals handed over the reins of the team to German coach Hans Michael Weiss. I feel that uh, the decision had, had, had to be made. And uh, at that time, the contract of uh, Simon was already expired. So I, I made it a point to look at uh, the possibility of getting new and uh, better coaches, at least on paper. Uh, coach Weiss had the, the edge over the others. And uh, when I went out of the country to interview all, all of them, uh, I felt that uh, Coach Weiss could uh, lead us to the direction where I would want the team to go. Difference, differences. Uh, Simon was more on uh, working a lot with the ball, foreign skills. He wanted us to play a ground. You guys are better skillful than these guys. So take them on. So Simon knew what the players were going through, and because he's very young and he, he just ended his career as a player, so he was good in that sense, relating to the players, what we were going through, and and, and Coach Weiss attacks it in a different way. He he says, uh, you know, the German way, of course, this is we do fitness, we do this, we run against them, we basically we we be more superior to them. So we, we do tactics that they're not going to be able to scope up against. So it, uh, in both ways, it, it works out. And the new coach didn't disappoint. As the Ascals advanced to the Elite Eight of the tournament for the first time ever. It was a long journey, a long journey. Because we, we had to do the qualifying uh, round first, uh, here first in Bacolod where we played Mongolia, where it was a, that, was a, that was a great day, a great night to bring football back to the Philippines after our recent success in the Suzuki Cup. Mm -hmm. So it was just a perfect fitting and a good display from, from the team. Then after that came our training camp in Japan, where right. there was an earthquake. And, we had a lot of traveling to do, a lot of things to deal with. Um, and then we had to go to Mongolia where it was minus, I don't know what the temperature was, but it was really freezing cold and we had to adjust to that. But well, we did the job in the end and qualified and then went on to the group stages in Myanmar. Chief, he's going to get that under control. He's got his head up on the edge of the box. Chief, and that's and it's a go. for the Philippines! And it looks like it's... It looks like it's James Young Osmond. I I believe. Can't quite confirm it, but it looks like James Young Osmond has scored it.